Hi everybody, welcome to my video. My name is Krista. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how I do a full face of a cool tone smoky look using the ColourPop Cold Stone Fox palette. Um, first I'm gonna go in with the Marc Jacobs Coconut Primer. I'm just gonna apply that with my hands all over my face. I'm just gonna rub that all over. And my face was clean. I used Dermalogica skincare. And next I'm gonna go in with the Tarte Shape Tape. Um, the shade is Light Sand. And I'm just gonna put two dots on my eyes. You don't need very much of this. It's very full coverage. And I'm just using that as an eyeshadow primer. Next, I'm gonna go in and blend that out with the JH07 brush. Um, I use it as a concealer brush. It's a Morphe Jaclyn Hill brush. And I'm just going to tap that all over and blend it out. You want it to be pretty thin, just barely covering up the eyelid. I also do blend it underneath my eyes. Again, just to act as a primer. And next I am going to use the JH05 brush. It's a small powder brush and I'm going to use Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder and I'm gonna set the uh, Tarte Shape Tape on my eyes. Usually I always use a powder over eyeshadow primer or concealer because I personally feel that it helps the eyeshadows blend. I know some people don't use powder, but I like to. And like I said, I'm gonna be using the ColourPop Stone Cold Fox palette today. It's a cool tone palette. And I've really been liking the palette. Um, it was really good price. Um, the shadows blend very, very well. I've pretty much been using it nonstop since I got it about two months ago. So the first color that I'm gonna go in with I, is called Trip. And I'm gonna be using the JH30 brush. It's a fluffy blending brush. And I'm just gonna take that into the crease. I'm using that as a transition shade. And I'm just gonna do windshield wiper motions back and forth and just kind of keep going into that color very lightly. You tap off any excess after you pick up any of the eyeshadow powder, you just quick tap it off and just blend back and forth. Next, I'm gonna be going in with the color Fascinated with that same fluffy brush. It's just a little bit darker of a tone back into the crease using windshield wiper motions. And it's very easy to blend these shadows and it's also very easy to build them up. I don't like to go into any eyeshadow too heavy to begin with. Um, it's a lot easier to add than it is to take away. So I like to start off soft. Next, I am going to be going in with my Revlon Color Stay Eyeliner in black. I've been using this eyeliner since probably middle school. It's the only black eyeliner that I personally like to use as far as just stick liners go. Um, when it comes to a gel liner, I really like the Maybelline Black Gel Liner. That personally works really good for me, but with anything in the waterline or if you want a retractable pencil liner, um, I really suggest the Revlon Color Stay in black. It lasts all day long on me. I have no problems blending it out. And then I'm gonna be going in with the e.l.f. Uh, Detail Crease Brush. It's like a skinny pencil brush, um, a little bit fluffy. And I'm going to be taking the color Bold Type. It's just like a mid-tone gray. And I'm gonna be blending out that eyeliner and smoking it out. I'm gonna take that Bold Type color up towards the crease because this is a little bit of a lighter gray. It's not too dark. Um, I'm gonna be 
smoking that out up into the crease. We are going to be going darker as we go along. Um, with the darker shades, we are gonna keep getting closer and closer down to the lash line. But because this is the lightest color, you're gonna take that up into the crease towards the transition color and just keep blending out. So that is what it should look like at that point. The next color I'm gonna be going into is Cult Classic, still with that little elf crease brush. And we're gonna be doing the same thing, just blending over top of that liner that we put down, going towards the crease. Maybe not as high up as we took bold type, um, but probably pretty close to the crease. And you're just gonna keep blending back and forth. And the next color that I'm gonna go into is Drama Mama. And we're getting a little bit darker. That's a pretty dark uh, brownish gray. And with this color, you're not gonna go up into the crease. Um, you're gonna stay probably about halfway between the lash line and the crease just to keep the darkness closer to the lash line. And that's what it should look like when you're done. And the next brush that I am taking is a Jessup Short Shader brush. I believe I got this brush off of like eBay or something years ago. It came in a set. It's supposed to be like a Sigma dupe set. Um, but with this, I am taking the color Rock Bottom and I'm keeping that right along the lash line. Rock Bottom is a black color. And we're gonna keep that as close to the lash line as we can. And that's what the top of the lid should look like when you're done. And I'm gonna go back with that Jessup brush. And this time we're going to be dipping back into bold type. And we're gonna start working on the lower lash line. So we're just applying that color along the lower lash line, blending out the eyeliner that we put in the waterline. And then we're going back in with that e.l.f. Um, fluffy crease brush. And I'm gonna dip back into bold type again, just to blend everything out a little bit more and smoke it along the lower lash line a little bit more. And that's what the lower lash line should look like at this point. I'm just going to keep going back and forth between that Jessup brush and that e.l.f. brush and just going darker again, I'm going down into Colt Classic. And I'm going to use that flat shader brush just to apply the color, just to get it along the lower lash line as tight as I can. And then I go back in with the e.l.f. brush right after just to blend it out. And I am wiping off the e.l.f. brush in between each time. So every time after I use the Jessup brush and apply the color, I'm using a, the clean e.l.f. brush to blend it back out. All right, so we're using that Jessup brush again, and we're going into Drama Mama. and sticking pretty tight to the lower lash line. And again, blending out. And this is what it should look like. And then we're gonna take that Revlon eyeliner again and go along the lower water line, about halfway through again. I never take any of these colors in towards the inner corner or anything. I like to keep everything towards the outer part of my eye. And then we're going back in with that big fluffy uh, JH30 brush again, and I'm just kind of blending everything out just to make sure there's no harsh lines. Everything is blended together. I'm also going along the lower lash line and blending out with that same big fluffy brush. 
And next I'm gonna be putting lashes on. Those are the Ardell Mega Volume. I believe they're the Demi Wispies. And I'm using the Maybelline Lash Stiletto Mascara. And I'm applying the lashes with um, the Kiss Adhesive. So I'm just gonna apply those with a tweezer. You wanna make sure when you apply lashes, I know sometimes the glue says only you know 20 to 30 seconds to wait until it gets tacky. Sometimes it can definitely take longer than that. You don't wanna apply too much glue. Um, that will keep you waiting a little bit longer for it to get tacky. You wanna make sure that the glue is practically almost dry. That will help you apply them. And I usually like to use a tweezer and I try to just set them down on my lashes in the middle, and then I just kind of stretch my eye out to attach the inner corner a little bit easier. And next we're gonna do foundation. I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way foundation in the shade Pearl. And I'm just gonna take an e.l.f. Uh, flat powder brush. I know it's a powder brush, but I've always liked to use it for foundation. I feel it's like the perfect density, at least for me. It's not too dense, it's not too fluffy. And I just dot that all over my face and just proceed to blend out in circular motions. I kind of go between tapping and blending I like to start out with blending in circular motions just to kind of get everything evened out. And then I will go in where I have more redness, like around my chin, around my nose, um, my forehead, and I will actually tap the product in. You do end up getting heavier coverage if you tap versus um, swirling and blending like that. So if you have any redness or anything that you need to cover, you would want to tap the product in there um, just to get the heavier coverage. And I always try to bring it down my neck. A lot of times you can see some people walking around with their foundation doesn't match their neck. <laughs> you don't want any harsh lines, so make sure you blend everything out. And that's what that should look like. And I'm going back in with the Tarte Shape Tape. And again, that is in the color Light Sand. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of highlighting. And again, this is a very full coverage concealer. You don't need a lot of it. So I just do a couple of dots, a little bit under my eyes, along my chin and my forehead. This is usually where I need the most coverage, where my redness shows through. And I'm going back in with that JH07 concealer brush and just blending everything out. Again, we're doing more of a tapping motion than a swirling motion. If you're gonna bother putting concealer, you want the coverage there, usually. Um, so if you tap the product in versus just kind of rubbing it all over, you'll get a heavier coverage. So I'm just proceeding to blend that out under my eyes. Again, like pulling down towards around my nose where I get a lot of redness, where I need more coverage. And I just kind of drag it out towards my ear and just blend everything down and out. And I also use my fingers um, a little bit under my eyes. The warmth from your fingers can help blend And I'm just gonna kind of keep blending everything together. Usually I'll take a little bit of the leftover concealer product and go around my mouth. And then I blend everything all together with that e.l.f. flat powder brush. Just to make sure everything's blended. And that's what we should look like after. 
And I'm gonna go back in with the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder just to set everything. And I'm gonna be using the JH05 brush again, um, that small powder brush. I do put a pretty decent amount of this powder on the brush and we kind of are baking. I, I don't let the product sit for more than maybe 30 seconds to a minute. I just use that under my eyes. Um, around my smile lines, my chin, my forehead, where I tend to get more oily and my makeup will break up more throughout the day. So this just helps it stay in place a little bit longer. And after that, I'm gonna go in with the JH01. It's a big powder brush. Um, I never applied any powder to my cheeks or um, my neck or anything like that. I'm just taking the existing baking powder that I had put on already and just kind of swirling everything together. It should be enough um, for less oilier areas. And then I'm gonna be using the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. I'm not sure if they make this palette anymore. It's pretty old. I should probably throw it out. <laughs> and I'm using an e.l.f. sculpting face brush and going in with the lightest contour shade in that palette and just tapping off the excess. And we're just gonna do a little bit of contouring. Um, I just hold the brush against my face, um, more of, I'm holding it more like vertically but horizontally against my face and a little bit above I know a lot of people do the, the sucking in face so that you can find where your cheekbones are. I go a little bit above where that line would be if you were to suck your cheeks in. I go a little bit above, it helps lift your cheekbones. And that's what that should look like when you're done. And then I do apply a little bit of that powder along my nose, just the sides of my nose and a little bit underneath, um, just mostly so that your nose doesn't get lost in your face. Sometimes when you have a full face of makeup on and concealer and everything, especially in pictures or videos, your, your nose can almost get lost in the middle of your face. Um, so using a little bit of bronzer or contouring powder just along the sides and around can help it kind of bring it back to life. And next I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil powder and an IT brushes number 227. It's a flawless blush brush. I got this from Ulta. I'm not sure if they still have it there or not. It's been a few years since I've had it, but I'm just gonna bronze all over the face. Usually I do this almost in like a number three where you start um, kind of at your forehead and then come down along the sides of the cheek and then back down along the jawline. From the side, it kind of looks like a number three. <laughs> and I do blend that powder down my neck just to make sure that everything is blending together and my face isn't a lot darker or lighter than my neck. I feel like blending is kind of the key word throughout this entire video. I just literally blend as much as I possibly can. <laughs> I also like to take my bronzer behind my ears. Um, I just imagine if my hair was up, um, if somebody was next to me and my hair was up, I don't want a weird, harsh bronzer line. So I do take my bronzer behind my ears. And we just kind of keep blending that out. And next, I'm going to be taking the um, JH05, that small powder brush. I didn't apply any more translucent powder. I'm just using what's left over on that brush just to kind of clean up along the jawline to make that contour look a little bit sharper and just kind of blend everything together. And next, I'm going to be using the JH06. It's a fluffy highlighting brush. And I'm gonna be using the Laura Mercier Loose Glow Powder. Um, I really like this 
for a highlight. I know they kind of advertise it as like an all over powder. Um, personally, I use it as a highlight. It's a very soft highlight. Um, you probably could use it all over. I would kind of compare it to the Hourglass. Um, I believe they're like setting powders. They have like glow setting powders. I believe they're pretty similar. But I'm just using this where I would normally apply highlight at the top of my cheekbones. And especially using a fluffier brush like this, you're not going to get a very intense highlight. I'm just applying that cheekbones, tip of the nose, um, chin above the eyebrows. Sometimes I'll blend it a little bit to my forehead. And then I'm gonna be going in with a BH Cosmetics blush brush. This is a very old brush. I don't know the number, it just came in a set. And I'm gonna be using NARS Deep Throat Blush. This is like more of a like pinky blush. Um, not a lot of like warmth, to it and I'm just going to be applying that to my cheeks and blending back to blend out the highlight and the bronzer. You just want everything to kind of melt together. And then I'm going to start doing my eyebrows. I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in dark brown. And I just kind of comb through them first just to make sure all the hairs are more so sticking up and are cooperating with each other. <laughs> And usually I'll start at the bottom of my eyebrow and kind of get the shape that I want underneath. And I like my eyebrows a little bit more arched. And then I'll switch to the top and do an outline of the top. I always kind of have to add a little bit more to my arch because it's not as high up as I would like it. <laughs> And then I will stop my tail a little bit shorter than where I actually want it to end up. I will go in with um, the ABH number uh, 7B angled brush uh, towards the end. And usually I'll take that brush because it's so thin. I will end up actually pulling the tail a little bit with the brush. It'll keep it very sharp. Um, because it's such a thin brush, you can get a very sharp line um, and tail of your eyebrow with the help of the brush. So that's just what I'm doing there. I'm just pulling my eyebrow out a little bit to get the tail nice and sharp. And I also use the brush to blend the beginning of my eyebrow because it doesn't have any product on it. I'll just kind of put the brush on its side and blend the front of my brow out and here I was just showing how my brow whiz ends up getting kind of pointy after you fill in your eyebrows it kind of has like an angled shape to it the pointy side I use to make tiny little hair like strokes just in the front of my eyebrow and then I'll brush it back out with the spoolie And then I just use the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. This stuff is like super glue for your eyebrows. <laughs> and this is the final look. And then I just went in and added Max uh, Blankety Lipstick. It's a cool tone pink nude. My favorite lipstick, I have like three of them. I keep them everywhere so I'm never out. <laughs> and usually instead of applying it like normal, I just kind of blot it in. It gives it a softer look. And this is what everything looks like. Bye guys. <laughs>